Instead of reaching across the aisle, this kind of discussion about a rules change is, build, is an attempt uh, to build a, a, a wall. Now, every time this happens, this discussion happens, the minority always appears to say the same thing. Uh, Senator Reid, the majority leader, said in 2006, to run the Senate, quote, said, quote, to run the Senate with respect for rules for the minority rights uh, has to be, and for the minority rights to be protected if he became the leader. He said, quote, the Senate was established to make sure that minorities are protected, and I'm going to do everything I can to preserve the traditions and rules of this institution that I love, end quote. Then Senator Obama said if the majority chooses to end the filibuster, then the fighting and bitterness and the gridlock will only get worse. Senator Schumer said the same year, 2005, that breaking the rules would, quote, change the whole balance of power and checks and balances in this great Senate and great country. And Senator Durbin warned in 2005 that what was then called the nuclear option would really destroy our system of checks and balances. Now, everyone would rush say, well, the Republicans talked about doing this then. That's why these people were making these comments. But Madam President, the point is the Republicans didn't do it. Republicans did talk about it in the majority, and they listened to the minority, and they listened to the arguments about the Constitution, and they didn't do it. What you talk about uh, may be important, but what you do is what's really important. Uh, and hopefully, uh, Democrats will look at this again and decide they don't want to do it. The Senate rules say it takes 67 senators to change the rules, and I believe that's what the parliamentarian will rule in the next Senate if this comes up. And then if you're going to do it with less than that, you have to immediately vote to overrule the parliamentarian and break the rules to change the rules. Doesn't sound like to me that's the way to solve problems or to work together, particularly in a Congress where the Senate's controlled by one party and the House is controlled by the other. What good does it do to force things through uh, our system that can't possibly get to the president's desk? Uh, the Senate operates differently from the House of representatives for a reason. I was in the House, I like the House. The House is run by the majority, and that's the way the Constitution intended it. They have two-year terms, and every year after the election, it was envisioned that the House of Representatives would be more responsive to what voters thought they wanted to do that day. But it was also envisioned that the Senate would serve as the reason that you had to think for a while about this. It wouldn't just be one election, but usually in the Senate takes a couple of elections where people have really verified, no, we want to change course. And changing course in a country as great and as big and as diverse as ours is a big decision. And the Constitution works that way uh, for a reason. Now, this is a hornet's nest that I don't think we need to kick over. Uh, our nation's founders knew what they were doing. Let's let the House be the House and the Senate be the Senate, let's, let's continue to have a reason for two different legislative bodies. If all we're having is, is, is a House that works like uh, the House and a Senate that works like the House, we really have significantly minimized the great genius of the Constitution. Allowing the minority party to exercise its rights to debate and amend legislation should be the rule, not the exception. I hope the Senate, uh, which will, is led by Democrats today and will be next year, will uh, stop this debate and start figuring out what we can do together uh, to solve problems, just like we've done this week with the defense bill and the trade bill, just like we've done in this Congress with, as I said to start, uh, with FAA and transportation uh, and postal reform and the farm bill, all of which came out of committee were open to any kind of wide-ranging amendments, had a bipartisan vote, uh, and reached the kind of legislative conclusion uh, that the Constitution envisioned and the people we work for have every right to expect. Uh, and uh, I will finish by noting, uh, Madam President, the absence of a quorum.